Here are 15 indie games you need to play right now. I talk a lot about games on my channel, but there's a lot of games that I love that I think everyone should play. These are all indie games, which means they're pretty cheap, and there's a Steam sale going on right now as I'm making this, so if you haven't played any of these, I urge you to give them a shot. I'm gonna give the retail price with all of these, but they go on sale pretty frequently, so if you haven't played any of them and my reviews sound enticing, please pick them up. I promise you won't regret it. I'm gonna start the list with one of my favorite games ever made, Stardew Valley. I adore this game. Everything about it screams charm, from the soundtrack to the little apple guys called Junimos, to the bit where you wanna understand the Junimos language so you get drugged by a wizard who might've had an affair with Caroline because her daughter has purple hair. This is a game about farming. I can gush all I want about it. It was made by one guy, it's $15 retail, and it is peak. There's a lot to do, but the main gameplay loop is just addictive and fun. You're a farmer who moved into the titular Stardew Valley. Your goal, farm. Buy crops, plant them, water them. But you did all that and it only just struck noon. You still have a whole day left. Now you have options. You can go to town and talk with villagers, do quests for them, romance them, go fishing, go to the caves. But once you unlock the community center, you're encouraged to master all the different aspects of the game with different goals and objectives for each mechanic. After completing different sections, you unlock new areas. There's festivals each month, different events. Each season has a different vibe, new items and soundtrack. But the seasons last for the perfect amount of time. Just as you conquer all the season has to offer, you continue to the next. It's an amazingly designed game. And whether you're there for the cozy feeling or the ultimate min-max with the fish spreadsheet out, I use the fish spreadsheet, you're gonna have a good time. It's my most played game on Steam. I love it. Go play it if you haven't. If you don't, I will find your IP address and I will leak you on Discord. I'm, I won't, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. It was made by one guy. I already said that, but I, I, I like, I can't comprehend the fact that one guy made this. This was his desk. This was his desk when he made the game. And it's the best thing I've ever played. Why? How? Anyway, go play it. Next up, we have Hollow Knight. Speaking of games with amazing soundtracks, can we get a hell yeah in the comments for this piano? <gasps> ah, bye The world of Hollow Knight is beautifully designed. All the characters are these cute little bugs. I normally don't like bugs, but these guys get a pass. The tone is dark and dreary, but still filled with character. I've never seen a Metroidvania before this that really made the world feel real. Everything is obviously there as a platforming or combat puzzle, but the little nooks and crannies with critters in it just make the game feel alive. The gameplay is amazing. I love Metroidvania games. It's because of Hollow Knight. You're dropped in this forgotten world and just kind of left to explore. You're encouraged to just go and figure it out along the way. The combat is tight. It's difficult, but it isn't hard. It has the Souls-like philosophy in its game design. It's challenging, but never impossible. One thing this game gave me that I'll never forget is an area called the Path of Pain. Towards the end of the game, it's a platforming challenge that forces you to master the game's platforming mechanics to survive. It took me several several hours to beat it on my first try, but it was a challenge that was so rewarding that I can't stop thinking about it. Like I genuinely think about the path of pain a lot. It's been two years since I did it. I'm still talking about it. It was a challenge that was so rewarding to complete. Like genuinely, I don't think any other game has made me feel as accomplished except maybe Elden Ring. This one's only 15 bucks. Give it a shot. It's amazing. Silk Song when. Number three on my list, we have a game called Neon White. This game came out in 2022 and it's everything I want from an FPS platformer. The game's main gimmick is that its weapons are also your movement mechanics. The pistol gives you a double jump, AR drops a sticky grenade that lets you rocket jump, RPG lets you rocket jump and is also a grapple. The game is designed with speed in mind. It has a heavy focus on platforming and speed running, encouraging you to optimize your route for the best time possible. You don't really get anything for speed running it, but it just feels so good that you you have to. In terms of gameplay, it's one of the most intuitive and well-designed games ever made, in my opinion. My only complaint is that it isn't longer. I want more levels, more cool stuff to do, because this game is just peak. The story takes place in heaven, which has a yearly demon clearing, and you play as a sinner that gets brought back to deal with the problem. Whoever kills the most demons gets to stay in heaven until you do it all over again. It's pretty sick. The gameplay is phenomenal. It's 25 bucks on Steam and makes you feel like an animal. 
At number four on my list, I have a game that's unlike anything else I've ever played. The game is called Hypnospace Outlaw. The entire thing takes place in what the game describes as an alternate history 1999. You play on a computer desktop and explore an early internet browser. It really nails the feel of the old internet more than anything I've ever seen. All the web pages are weird and poorly designed. You'll click on one and music will automatically start playing. It's nothing if not commitment to authenticity. You play as what is essentially a Discord mod going through hypnospace looking for people violating the terms of service. You're given missions that task you with exploring the web. There's no hand-holding, you just have to explore yourself and figure it out as you go. It's a very charming experience and one of the most unique games I've ever played. And I barely hear any people talk about it, which is a shame because it's just sick. It's 20 bucks on Steam and well worth it for the experience. Coming in at number five is Death Road to Canada. What if Oregon Trail was sick? The game follows your ragtag party of characters as you brave the apocalypse on the Death Road to Canada. There's a zombie outbreak in the US, it's safe in Canada, you start in Florida, and you have to work your way up. The game's a roguelike with Oregon Trail-esque events along the way, so you have to manage stats and choices while also surviving zombies. You start with a party of your choosing, pick up quirky characters along the way, and probably lose a couple cars in the process. My favorite thing about this game is you can lose your entire starting party along the way and still win. But the person you win with is just some guy you found. It's a really good example of risk versus reward. You could choose to go to a more dangerous place which could give you a better haul but is more likely to kill you and your party, or you could pick a more tame route that'll make it easier but give you less in return. You can recruit extra party members but they go through more food, and you can trade that food for more supplies and weapons. Everything is a risk and it's all super satisfying. At $15 and with up to four player co-op, it's an amazing deal. Now the game at number six on this list is one that holds a very special place in my heart. The Henry Stickman Collection is a game by the creators of and I think it's part of the reason that Among Us is even where it is today. The game had an Easter egg where you could find crewmates as part of an achievement. It came out in like 2020 and like a month later Among Us blew up and nobody talks about it. This game made Among Us. Anyway, the Henry Stickman Collection is a collection of Flash games with an added final game at the very end. It is the definition of Newgrounds internet comedy. The game is pretty much a montage of parodies and jokes making fun of different games and mechanics. It's structured like a choose your own adventure style game, but most of the options lead you to die hilariously. It's less of a game and more of a Newgrounds animation that you can interact with, but it's packed with charm and jokes. Some of the humor didn't age the best because a lot of it was based on memes from the time, but overall the writing is solid and it's just a fun time. It's very clever, doesn't take itself too seriously, has a lot of running gags, and it's just neat. I played the Flash games growing up, so when it came out, part of my 10 year old self smiled. And for 15 bucks, I'd say it's well worth it. But if you don't want to pay that, all but the last game are online on Newgrounds completely for free. But speaking of comedic games that are more like a choose your own adventure, the Stanley Parable is a game about games. It's a meta commentary on the nature of choice in video games and is one of the best written examples of comedy in games. Ultra Deluxe has 42 different endings and is $25 on Steam. The game is pretty much just you messing with the narrator and it's all very clever. Everything it says is a critique of some aspect of gaming. And if you go against everything the narrator wants, there's an ending where he just throws you in different games like Minecraft or Firewatch. He literally says, you don't like this game, play Another one. I can't really say much about it without spoiling some of the experience. So if you want something funny and self-aware, give it a shot. And number eight on the list, we have Ultra Kill. You can tell by this in Neon White that I love movement-based shooters. Ultra Kill is a boomer shooter in the style of something like Quake that has you descending through hell, killing everything in sight. The gameplay is refined, the levels are well-designed, it's ultra-violent, but it's also in that low-poly style of 90s shooters. It's all about the gameplay, and the gameplay is some of the most satisfying FPS gameplay out there. At $25, it is a steal. It's just as good, if not more satisfying than Doom Eternal, which is 60 bucks normally. Number nine on the list is an interesting one. Rain World is a Metroidvania survival game. I can't really explain Rain World because it needs to speak for itself. You aren't the apex predator, you are prey. You're put in a world where most things can kill you and they will. Combat often means running for your life, hoping whatever's chasing you runs into a bigger foe or finds another form of prey. And then the rain comes. It's called Rain World for a reason. And I'm not gonna spoil what happens because if you don't know, it's genuinely one of the most 
most terrifying experiences ever. The sound design is tense. The atmosphere is beautiful, but scary. You play as a little guy. It's great. You're on the clock in this one. You need to explore, find food to hibernate, then hibernate, rinse, repeat. But you can only hibernate in certain spots. The world changes when you do. Doors open in specific cycles. It's complicated, but words cannot describe the feeling this game gives you. If you like Metroidvanias, you will adore this game. If you don't, still give it a shot because it made me feel ways I've never felt while playing a game. It's not a horror game, but I truly felt like prey while playing this. And for 25 bucks, it is well worth the experience. At number 10 on the list, we have Tunic. Tunic is one of those games you can only really play once, but I don't care. It's a game about exploration. It's structured similarly to the original Legend of Zelda with a more modern twist. You're given the game's manual, which is missing pages, and you have to discover them throughout the game. The manual tells you how to play the game, but only when you find its pieces. There's a door from the first minute that you only figure out how to open at the very end of the game, but you could have done it all along. Like all the mechanics are there at the beginning. You just don't know how to use them. It's genius game design. The gameplay is sleek and clean, kind of Dark Souls action adventure RPG combat. The atmosphere is surreal and the score really sells it. You play as a cute little fox guy. There's a whole made up language you can figure out how to decode if you feel like it. It's like a game with an ARG built in for some of its mechanics, which is really cool. And it's just plain fun. If you like 2D Zeldas, you'll love Tunic. It's 30 bucks, but well worth it. Next up is Inscription. Inscription is best described as a card game roguelite horror RPG. It starts off as a game in progress. The card game itself is extremely fun. There's boss fights in a card game, just overall good roguelite mechanics, but the story really carries it. I'm not going to spoil it, but there's games within games here, and your goal is to beat the game to reveal the other games. I want to talk about the twist, but I'm just going to have to let you play it for yourself to figure it out. I like the gameplay in the first half a little bit more than the second, but at the same time, I think the game itself is just really well made and the card game just feels good. The deck building is really hype and overall it's just a blast. It's $20. I suggest going in as blind as you can. Just trust the process. At number 12 we have if you haven't played Super Hot, play Super Hot. Play Super Hot VR. Play the sequel Mind Control Delete. Super Hot is an FPS with the best gimmick in the world. Time only moves when you do. Because of that, the game makes you feel like Neo from the Matrix, especially in VR. You feel so cool. I'm technically recommending three different games here, but each of them are awesome in their own right. If you want a game that will make you feel like an action hero, Super Hot is the game. All three games are 25 bucks each. If you have VR, and you don't have super hot, you're throwing. If you don't have VR, play the original and then the sequel. They're amazing. Ask anyone and they'll tell you super hot is the most innovative shooter I've played in years. At 13, we have one of my favorite party games, Ultimate Chicken Horse. Ultimate Chicken Horse is a game about trolling. You're given a platforming challenge, and then each round you get a mix of platforms, obstacles, and traps to change the course. And each round is different based on how good you and your friends are at designing the map. It's always a good time, it's only $15, and it has a switch port so you can play it anywhere, which is perfect. Rounds aren't too long, so it's low commitment, and overall, it's just an excuse to get mad at your friends. This game brings out my evil side in the best way possible. But speaking of party games, there's one I really like called Runbo is a party platformer with a really simple gimmick. The background changes color, and if a platform is the same color as the background, it no longer exists. Now, the best version of the game is the Wii U port somehow, which is a crime against humanity, but if you have the means, please, I beg of you, get Runbo for the Wii U. It has an exclusive mode called the Color Master, where everyone plays on Wiimotes except for one player on the gamepad. The player on the gamepad is the Color Master and control the players on the TV. The TV players are working together to win as much as possible, and the Color Master is working to make them lose. It supports 10 players, which makes it an insane party game. It's 15 bucks on Steam, but if you have a Wii U, get this game. Trust the process. I don't know if you can get it anymore now that the eShop is closed, but you can get it. 
And finally, at number 15, we have Minute. Minute is another game with a really cool gimmick. It reminds me of one of those Game Boy Zelda games, except the sword you pick up at the beginning of the game is cursed and it kills you every minute. You have one minute to explore and do your thing with the occasional checkpoint bed along the way so you respawn at a different place. The game has progression despite the time limit, but the one minute limitation really makes you think quick and creatively to solve its puzzles. It's a quick one, but a fun one, and it has a pretty good deal of secrets to uncover. It's only 10 bucks, but it's really charming, and I think it deserves more people talking about it. But that's my list, 15 indie games you need to play right now. If you want to support me and the channel, go to badideasmerch.com. It helps me out, and you get a cool piece of clothing from it. Let me know if I should make more stuff like this. I'm trying out different stuff for long-form videos, and I had a lot of fun with this one. But basically, I'm just trying out a lot of different content. I'm going to be doing different stuff like this in the coming weeks. And if you haven't already, watch my comedy series, Bill and Cletus. It's really funny. I think you'll like it. Bye.